Hey everyone, we have made some awesome changes in this bathroom just by painting the shower tile and refinishing this old tub. But today I'm super excited because we're finally gonna get some color in here. I'm about to start painting and stenciling the tile floor. Let's get started. Okay guys, so for this project, I'm actually using most of the same supplies that I have been using throughout this entire project. The primer that I used on the tile in the shower, the bath area, is the same primer that I put on the tile floors. They were actually the exact same tiles. So I knocked all of that out at one time, got all the priming done at once. So today we're actually gonna be able to start with the paint. The paint I'm using on this project, ooh! only comes in gallon size and I'm using Bear's porch and patio. So the reason I did this was because originally I went to Benjamin Moore, which I love, but theirs is um, like 75 a gallon and this is like half the price. So to be honest, it was just a price difference um, and I was able to color match the Benjamin Moore color. So sorry friends, but I did have to go with the cheaper one. Um, that being said, I have used the porch and patio paint on our actual porch and patio and it holds up phenomenally. So I knew that putting this in a seldomly used bathroom that will actually have a rug or a bath mat over the majority of the high traffic area, it's gonna work amazing. So I'm super excited to get started on this. Um, I am using, as I mentioned, a lot of the same supplies I've been using this whole time that I will link for you guys below. The main difference is that I am using a paint pole. <laughs> I do not wanna be down on my hands and knees if I can avoid it. So I had back surgery and I don't really play around with that. So I will cut in around the walls, the tub, the toilet, because I also do not like painter's tape if I can avoid it. Uh, so don't freak out if you see that part. I promise it's super easy. Just use a small angled brush and you'll get perfect paint lines every time. So. Let's get painting. Before priming, we had to clean the floors. Luckily, we just moved back in our home and had had it deep cleaned. I made sure to vacuum up all the debris and do a quick mopping. Our vanity was already moved out so that it could be painted. You can see all about that vanity makeover in my previous video. I've tagged it in the eye and down below. The best primer I've ever used is called Styx. This stuff is amazing. It's made specifically for sticking to hard to adhere to surfaces, kind of like your tile floor. After priming, we could already see what a difference this paint job was going to make. This is the same primer we used in the shower. Use a brush and a roller to make sure you get in all of those tile grooves and cover the grout. We needed two coats of primer to cover our dark colored tiles. I used a brush to cut in around the edges and on the grout lines, then went back with the roller and smoothed everything out and ensured I had the whole tile covered. How do you turn it to selfie mode? You wearing a gray shirt to match me? No. After the primer dries, do another quick cleaning. You won't thank yourself later when you don't have a bunch of dust and dirt in your paintbrush. When it was time to paint, we started with the base coat of white. Ultimately, we wanted the stenciled tiles to be turquoise with the white showing through like grout lines. It also made sense to put the lighter color down first. Thankfully, the primer did such a great job covering that we only needed one coat of the white paint. Start by cutting in around the walls, your tub and toilet, then use the roller to cover those larger areas. You'll also need to brush in on the grout lines so that the floor is completely covered. I used a paint pole with my roller brush attached to cover the majority of the tiles quickly and easily. Plus, it totally saves you some back pain. You'll be down on the ground plenty when it comes time for the stencil. The brush helps you smooth out the paint, especially around the grout lines.
Now it's time for the color. We picked this turquoise color to match the wallpaper that's coming up. It's actually our next project. To prepare the stencil, I applied a coat of spray glue to get it nice and sticky. This helps keep it in place when rolling the paint. Also, you may want to spray this outside. The first section I stenciled, I also taped down the stencil, but I ended up skipping this step the rest of the time. To start stenciling, I went as close as I could to the tub and flush to the wall so I could start with a full section of the stencil. This meant I'd have a small space to fill in later around the tub. When rolling paint for the stencil, aside from making sure your stencil stays down, the most important part is to make sure you don't have too much paint on the roller. I used a paper towel on a paper plate and after loading the roller, I'd get the excess off on the paper towel. Then when I started rolling over the stencil, I'd go over it several times instead of trying to get full coverage on the first pass. This takes a bit more time, but it helps ensure that your lines don't bleed. Now pulling up your stencil is super satisfying, but don't freak out if there's bleeding or the lines aren't perfect. You can always go back and touch up, and the best part is, for the most part, your imperfections won't even show. You're down on the floor on your hands and knees, you're gonna notice everything. Take a step back and peep your work. When moving on to the next section, the registration marks make it really simple to line up and keep moving. The spray glue will need to be reapplied, so if you notice that your stencil isn't staying down, just add a bit more glue or you can try some painter's tape. The biggest problem I ran into was the stencil I'm using is much larger than my floor tiles. The stencil didn't fit perfectly within the grout lines because the new faux tiles I was painting, I wanted to be smaller than these 12 by 12 tiles that were on the floor. This meant that some holes were left where the roller didn't get down in the grooves between the tiles. On the first stenciled section, I tried to fill these in with a paintbrush while the stencil was still in place, but after that I figured out it was much better to just fill these in after I'd removed the stencil. Taking the time to go back and fill in each of the gaps and also to touch up the white paint in places made a huge difference. If you aren't painting over grout lines, this will be much easier for you. I had to fill in all the low places that that roller couldn't reach. So crank up some music or an audiobook and get to work. I actually found it super relaxing to paint in all these little tiny spaces. Stenciling around the tub and the toilet also proved to be frustrating. My stencil did come with a smaller one that could easily go into some places, but I mostly had to like press the stencil in place and hold it down as much as I could, and then at least get like a bit of the edges so I could see where the lines were supposed to be. After that, I actually freehanded a lot of the design around the edges, and behind the toilet was especially hard. Filling in the details was definitely the most time consuming part of this project. If you get a stencil that will fit perfectly on your tile size, you shouldn't have these issues though. Just take your time and remember, no one will look that closely at these. Plus you can skip the area under your vanity, I won't tell. I hope this project inspires you to paint your bathroom tile. Be sure you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss my next video with the wallpaper and then of course our final reveal.